Hey guys, this is just a really quick video. I've had some requests to explain or clarify how to set the crossover points in Dirac. If you've got Dirac Live Base Control or now just called Base Control, it doesn't matter if it's single or multi sub, works exactly the same. So, what we're doing is blending our response between our subgroup and all the other groups. They're done independently. You can see what they're currently set to in the top corner of each group. This happens to be my current best set for all my groups in my room. It's not perfect, but I've got very close proximity to my back wall. So I do have a few nulls here and there. Luckily, you can't hear this one in the sub range. This one here, about 95, there's really nothing I can do much about, but I can show you how to make the best of whatever you've got. Now, before I do that, I want to show you how to get the most out of your subs really quick. By default, Dirac will stop its correction point down at 20 hertz. Now, if you've got great subs, you're probably going down into single digits. And what you want to do is right click on the line here, add control point to, and then drag it to all the way left that you can. I'm going at the same level, 6 dB boost. But now Dirac will try and extend all the way down to about 12. So much, much better if you've got great subs. If you don't, if your subs are rolling off naturally at 20, don't do that because you're just going to try to make them play what they can't and you're going to be wasting a lot of power, might damage your subs. So make sure your subs can handle that first. But as far as the crossover goes, this is trial and error. Unfortunately, Dirac does not calculate them. It would be kind of cool if it did, or at least give you the option to. It would be a very long process sitting and waiting because it's trial and error and calculating, but it would be really nice if they would do that. By default, it sets nearly everything to 70 hertz. If you've got decent speakers, it's going to measure the response and take it down to 70, which is, its, as far as I know, lowest crossover setting that it will ever set. If you've got crappy speakers, it's going to start bumping that up. 80, 90, 100, whatever, but those are like tiny little bookshelves. I doubt anyone's using that kind of stuff if you're using Dirac. So what we're looking for is a smooth crossover region. Now, because I moved that, and this is why this process takes a while your first time, as soon as you move any of these, even if you put it back to where it was, you lose your graph. And what you have to do is click calculate again, and this is based on your single core performance of your computer. This is a fairly fast laptop and it only takes about a minute and a half. If you've got a really slow laptop, but maybe you've got a really fast desktop, you can run direct on your desktop. Anything on the network can do this work. So you don't need the mic plugged in and all you need is to be on the same network as your processor. So you can speed things up if you, especially if you want to do a lot of different testing, just use your fastest computer, but it's not too bad. So after this is done, we're going to see the chart of its predicted response. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Now, this will show the predicted response of each individual speaker. You can also group the lines to make it a little easier to read. And this can be handy for finding out if one particular speaker is in a null or you're in a null from its position. I actually have one of my surrounds in that. And so it can make it a little easier to figure out what's going on. Now here at the 70, response isn't that terrible. This null I've got around 95, that's going to be there no matter what I do, because that's because I'm close to a rear wall in the room. So there's no point trying to fight that, but you can try to minimize it. And all you do to minimize it is trial and error. Now you can do screenshots, you can take photos, you can take notes, however you want to do this, move your point, recalculate, check out the graph. Now, right here at the crossover region, that's where these two lines are meeting. It's actually really good. I did find 85 to be slightly better. It just brings all of this up a touch. I mean, it's subtle, but subtle is better than nothing. So I set that particular group to 85. Likewise with my center, 85 turned out to be the best for it as well. And you can see the line is very nice and tight around the crossover region. And then my other groups, my surround, you can see that the yellow and blue have slightly different responses right here at the crossover region. This yellow does have this bit of a dip. 
And that's because one is near a corner in a room and the other is near a hallway. So I do have different response just throughout this region. And I had found through trial and error that 95 works the best just to even things out and keep things as best under control as possible. Likewise with my Atmos speaker groups, same thing. I've got that null because of the wall, but 95 evens them out as good as possible in the room. And that's all there is to crossovers. Now the good news is once you set and find the best crossover for each of your groups, you just have to remember it. And every time you do a measurement, put it in. You don't have to experiment anymore unless you've changed your curve, you've changed your speakers or moved your speakers or moved your main listing position. Then you're gonna to have to go through this again because that will affect everything in the room. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to save a preset like saving a set of curves. So you can't save your crossover selections or adding that point or the curtain selections. You have to do that manually if they're not there in your project. But that's it. Hope it helps somebody. See you next time.